In this video, we're gonna discuss belt drive turntables versus direct drive turntables. We'll discuss what the differences are, the pros and cons to each, and which one might be best for you. Now let's get started. If you've been doing research on turntables or maybe you're looking to purchase your first turntable, you may have noticed that some models are classified as belt drive turntables, while others are referred to as direct drive turntables. So what's the difference and which is better? Well, this has been a subject of much debate for the last 50 or so years. At Audio Advice, we feel part of the answer lies in how you will be using the turntable and to some degree also depends on your budget. First, we would like to say that belt drive or direct drive is not the final factor in deciding how good a turntable is. Several other factors go into that equation, such as the quality of the tone arm, the photo cartridge, and basic design and construction quality of the turntable itself. Now, if you don't know what any of those are that I just listed, check out our turntable buyer's guide that has everything you'll need to know to get started in the world of turntables. I'll link it in the description below. And if you still have questions about turntables or which one is best for you after watching this video, just call or chat with our team of experts at audioadvice.com and they'll be happy to help you out. And when you buy your turntable or any other gear from audioadvice.com, you also get free shipping, lifetime expert support, and a price guarantee. All right, to start, let's look at the basic differences between belt drive and direct drive turntables. Just as its name implies, a belt drive turntable uses a belt to spin the turntable platter. The motor is typically found somewhere off to the side and has a belt that wraps around the turntable platter. This could be on the very outside edge of the entire platter or on the outside edge of an inner platter that the outer platter rests on. The belt provides an easy way to isolate the motor from the turntable platter. Due to the fact that they are driven by a belt, most belt drive tables can take a few seconds to get up to full speed, but they're always faster than it takes the cueing mechanism to drop the stylus on the record. Eventually, the belt will wear out and will need to be replaced, which is normally a very simple and inexpensive exercise. With direct drive turntables, the motor is directly under the platter. Direct drive turntables usually get up to speed almost instantly. Also, when you turn off a direct drive turntable, the platter is free spinning with no resistance. These two features make direct drive turntables the choice of DJs around the world. They are able to easily spin the record in either direction without any risk of damage to the turntable motor when it is off. The quick start feature means the music is the right pitch from the first second the stylus hits the record groove. Direct drive tables also will give you a speed control. So as a DJ, if you wanna change the tempo to blend one song into another with two turntables, it's pretty easy to do so with the range of speed adjustment available on a direct drive table. Like we said, belt drive turntables, by contrast, usually take several seconds to get up to speed. The belt is also always part of the mechanism, so spinning the platter in either direction with the motor off is gonna cause some wear on that belt. The platter will also not spin freely as you have the resistance of the belt itself. Also, with belt drive, there's not really a way to change the speed except to switch it from 33 to 45. So with all of that said, if you plan to use your turntable for DJ use, the differences between the way that the two get up to speed, they can spin freely and can adjust speed, make a direct drive model the obvious choice. But what if you aren't a DJ? While direct drive turntables are great for DJs, many of us purchase a turntable simply to listen to music. For this, a direct drive, well, it may not be your best option. For vinyl lovers, the goal is less about changing speeds and mixing music, and more about hearing all of the nuances in the record grooves with as little distortion as possible. There are several factors that can adversely affect the sound of your turntable. As your stylus is tracking through the grooves, you want it to pick up what is only in those grooves and nothing else. Well, what if you have a large high torque motor sitting right under the platter? That's what you have with direct drive, and thus you run the risk of the noise from the motor getting into your platter and being picked up as background rumble by your stylus. Belt drive inherently helps isolate the platter from the motor because the only connection is a rubber belt. Almost all belt drive turntables worth any salt also suspend the motor so it is not fully connected to your turntable. Some even have it totally separate from the turntable. The odds are this method is gonna give you less chance of motor noise getting into your sound. One thing that has been very appealing to people listening to vinyl is the way it seems to draw you into the music. 
At Audio Advice, we feel part of this is due to the fact that a great turntable keeps the pitch of the music just perfect. CD players over the years have gone to great lengths with all kinds of clocking technology to try and get those digits to come out as precisely the same pitch as they went in, and many audiophiles might argue that they never did fully get it right. So, how does a turntable affect this? Well, the answer is consistency of speed. Yes, a direct drive turntable gets up to speed really quickly and holds its speed over time very well. But what keeps it going at the proper speed? Direct drive turntables require a lot of circuitry that is constantly looking at the speed of the motor and making adjustments to keep the speed from changing. The constant correcting of speed manifests itself as very tiny changes in speed that are not really measurable, but our ears seem to be able to discern. For this reason, we feel you are just drawn into the music more on a better belt drive turntable. But belt drive alone is not end all be all. We feel belt drive can have better speed stability if it uses a heavy platter. Once this platter gets up to speed, the odds of it having micro changes in pitch are virtually nil. Yes, it might drift slightly over a long period of time compared to a direct drive, but we think it's less noticeable than the constant adjustments that occur in a direct drive table. Of course, a belt drive turntable does need to have a fairly heavy platter and a well isolated motor. We feel that if you can get those two right, then in almost all cases, the belt drive will outperform the direct drive for sheer musical enjoyment. You will have less chance of motor noise getting picked up by your stylus, and the speed should be perceived as more pure. However, with all those things being said, with the huge popularity of turntables in the recent years, direct drive manufacturers have not been sitting still. New motor technology has come out that greatly reduces those minute speed changes. Some have started to use very heavy platters to minimize this effect as well. So, if you're looking at a high-end turntable around a $2,000 and up, you will start to see more direct drive models. As you go above $25,000, you will see a few more. And if you need some suggestions of our favorite belt drive and direct drive turntables, I'll link in the description to videos that we've done on the best options under $500, under $1,000, and under $2,000. And of course, our team of experts at audioadvice.com are always just a call or a chat away if you have more questions and need help getting started on your turntable journey. You can also stop by any of our award-winning showrooms and we'd be happy to help you out. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and turn on the notifications so you never miss any of our latest content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.